What's up guys, Sleepy Morty here, back with another video. And today we're here with the Rapu 8900P, one of the first non-Apple chiclet style keyboards that have really grabbed my attention. Now today's keyboard has been sent over by anywhere, but if you'd like to know more about that, check the description box. But nevertheless, let's kick it off with the design department. And in said design department, this thing feels and looks kind of futuristic. With a top deck featuring a super nice smooth brush metal finish in this brilliant gunmetal colour, it just looks absolutely on point. It's also too rather difficult to see any marks on this guy, so the darker colours definitely make it good in avoiding fingerprints and finger oils on the top deck. The keys themselves, which we'll touch on in just a moment, are also too extremely nice and well textured, but the standout part in the design department is this top glossy section, sort of like a touch bar, but not exactly how you may think of it. So, this guy actually lights up with capacitive keys, much like what you would have on your Android phone and basically allows you to do your media control through this. The difference being is one, they do light up, but also to two, it has a haptic motor inside of this guy. So when you click these virtual buttons, it gives you a little vibration letting you know that you've actually clicked it. The lights will come on for a few seconds and then they'll slowly start to dim and turn off. And overall, I thought this implementation of a media row was really, really interesting. It's a little bit of a letdown that you can't exactly reprogram this to whatever you want, as I reckon that would have been a really cool feature to allow you to do a whole lot more with this, but it was definitely a cool implementation of a audio and also to video system here. But the best part of this little row is it doesn't need any special software. Plug your little receiver into your Mac, PC, or your Linux box, and it just works straight up. No need for drivers, no need to install anything, it just straight up goes ahead and works. Now flipping around to the back of this guy, we get ourselves the silver side of the brushed aluminium surface, which grabs fingerprints and oils super, super fast. I've only had this guy out of the box for a couple days now, and this thing has stained super, super hard. I don't know how much we're gonna be able to actually pick up in camera, but in person, you can see exactly where I grabbed this out of the box. Even though my hands aren't exactly that oily, it grabbed all those oils that were on my hands and have gone ahead and stained. Sure, you could clean this guy up, but it just is a little bit of a letdown that it's stained so fast. Then finally on the back side of this guy, we get some feet to go ahead and hold this guy on your table, which are really nice pieces of rubber. And then also too, we get ourselves the little motor section and also to the on off switch with battery compartment right next to it. Overall, the whole design of this guy isn't really that bad. And I really do love the fact of just looking down the side of this keyboard and seeing just how thin it is. I really love how well thin this guy is, even though it offers so much travel and so much response when you do use the keyboard. Now this keyboard combo, being the combo you can see right here also do comes with the mouse and I recommend you throw that mouse out because it is really really not the greatest. Don't get me wrong though it will get you by and you'll be able to use your computer and basically it'll be fine there however it just doesn't feel that great for long gaming sessions or really long computer use cases. It starts to feel grubby the glossy plastic surface grabs any sweat or oils that come off your hand making it slippery and overall it doesn't really feel the greatest. The little zoom toggle that's also too on the mouse I felt was a little bit too close to the uh, left click right there. So when I found myself trying to zoom in, I also too found myself just clicking on whatever was on the screen as those two are very, very close. The back and forward navigation keys were also too nice to have just like the Rapu MT750. However, these guys were super mushy and I really didn't exactly like the feel of it. Again, this mouse does get the job done. However, it feels like it's a little bit on the cheap side. I do wish that Rapu had bundled their MT750 mouse, which I did check out right here, which would be a killer combination. After the first couple days of using this keyboard, I basically ditched the stock mouse that came with it and used the MT750 and it was so much nicer. This guy with the MT750 is an absolute killer combination. Again, don't get me wrong though, the included mouse feels okay and it does get you by and definitely is a step up over your kind of, well, standard included little cheapo Microsoft mouse, but... At the end of the day, it's nothing really in comparison to the MT750. Ergonomics of the mouse though were definitely decent and again are a step up over other things. However, there are still a lot of mice on the market that do offer better ergonomics, better features, better design and overall are just a little bit better than this mouse. 
and that is a bit of a letdown here. Now if we go ahead and take a closer look at the actual keys themselves on this keyboard, we do find ourselves some of the most clickiest chiclet style key switches I've ever typed on. Now I personally love Cherry MX Blue switches for their tactile feedback and clicky feel overall and this keyboard offers the most clicky response I've ever felt outside of a mechanical keyboard. It's so responsive and just feels crisp when you actually go ahead and type on this guy. When I got out of the box I could not believe how tactile this thing felt. The keys use a 4mm stainless steel base and aluminium alloy in their floating chocolate button switches which is the biggest load of marketing terms I've ever heard. But put simply, it uses a similar chiclet style design as to what a lot of other manufacturers have been using. However, it is rather thin and is rather clicky in its response. Now for me, I also too, on top of liking the Cherry MX Blues, also too love Apple keyboards. And this thing is kind of like a merge between the two. It takes the clicky and responsiveness of your mechanical kind of keyboard and then merges it with the chiclet style that Apple has been very well known for and actually makes the Apple keyboards look kind of mushy outside of their butterfly option. And typing on this guy right next to a wireless Apple keyboard, there is really no comparison. The Apple one feels mushy, whereas this guy feels responsive and crisp and overall really, really great. Now, yes, it is no comparison to an actual mechanical keyboard, but for a chiclet style low profile keyboard, it actually stands up really, really well and is one of my favorites out there when it comes to chiclet style keyboards. Finally, the stabilizations on the keys were also too on point so no matter where I pushed whether it be on the edge or the center of the key it basically pushed down there was no wobble flex or anything like that of the individual keys it was clicky responsive and really really awesome again whether I was in the center or off to the edge now jumping into some office tasks whilst writing this review I was pleasantly surprised on how actual usable it was in day-to-day -day operations the keyboard worked just fine however there was no num lock caps lock or scroll lock lights which was a really big pain the lack of a caps lock light was a real big letdown for me as you can't tell when caps lock was on. Sure once you start typing and the capital letters start to show up you can just backspace and then be done. However a lot of other manufacturers of wireless keyboards have already worked this one out and chucked a little low profile LED on this guy and I really don't understand why Rapu didn't do that. If they've made a whole light up row why couldn't we've got an extra little LED that would go ahead and light up when caps lock was on and basically be done there. Sure it's going to use a little bit of more battery life but at the end of the day I would sacrifice some battery life to get those LEDs set on the keyboard so I could see what the heck was going on with my setup. Sure, again, it is easy to go ahead and correct your mistake by just simply backspacing it, but it would have been nice to have a light. Heck, even the Apple keyboard offers you a little light. So why Rapu didn't do that, I'm not exactly sure. In terms of typing and accuracy, my words per minute were actually faster on this keyboard than my regular mechanical keyboard, mainly because the way I type on chiclet keys is a lot of mushing between the letters. So if I'm going to type ED, I just basically move my finger down from E to D without lifting off for a very fast typing experience. I had about 110 words per minute over my regular 95 words per minute with 98% accuracy, which was really great. Seeing I've only used this keyboard for about a couple days to a week worth of time uh, in terms of this review period, which was again, really awesome to see that it's easy to adapt with this keyboard. And thanks to the fact that it has a really tactile experience, there's no accidental misclicks and mushing of keys because you know exactly when you hit a key and where you hit that thanks to the fact again it is extremely tactile so I really did like that about it. In terms of gaming it was also too on point again thanks to those crisp and snappy feeling keys you knew exactly when you hit a key and it was really awesome in the gaming department but again I think I'd still take a mechanical keyboard over this guy when it comes to games anyway. The mouse was also too okay in games but after about 20 minutes I noticed a little bit of hand oils and sweat started to build up on that uh, glossy plastic surface it felt grubby and kind of gross and really wasn't exactly that nice if you're planning on getting this guy for gaming I do recommend picking up another mouse because again that mouse really isn't going to be doing you any favors on the plus side of this guy it is absolutely clicky and has a really nice tactile response the media controls with haptic feedback was also too really cool and really unique as there's really not that many other keyboards out there doing this kind of implementation the gunmetal gray was also too really good to look at and high 
hides the fingerprint and oils from the top deck surface. However, with that being said, on the downside, it does not ship with rechargeable batteries, which was a bit of a sore point. Sure, the battery life was extremely long and there's still plenty of charge left in these batteries, but it would have been nice to have some sort of rechargeable so you're not exactly throwing out uh, disposable batteries all the time. The fact that there's no caps lock, num lock or scroll lock lights was also to another major letdown and also to for some reason the print screen, scroll lock and also to pause break key were all the way over on the uh, right side rather than sort of on top of the special function keys in the center. And finally the brushed aluminium was definitely really nice to look at and I really love the top deck surface however at the end of the day it is going to stain which is a major downside. And finally the included mouse was okay and will get you by but really is kind of terrible when compared to many other mice on the market. Price wise coming in around 100 Australian dollars it is definitely up there with the more expensive options but the keyboard itself does definitely reflect its premium price tag with good materials and a premium design. I just wish that the bundled mouse was a little bit more with it and offered a little bit more here rather than its low quality parts. Sure it gets you by but for $100 I was really expecting a more premium mouse. Though that being said again the keyboard does definitely make up for it and if you were to throw in another mouse for a little bit more it would definitely make for a killer combination just again like the MT750 that I checked out a little while ago. All in all Rapu has made a really nice keyboard that delivers a decent design in a way that not many other people are actually making keyboards. After an hour with this guy I was just as fast and as accurate and after a couple hours I was even faster and about as accurate as I was with my keyboard that I've been using every day for the past five years. The mouse was a bit of a letdown and whilst it does get you by it's nothing special and I would have liked to have seen them include something more premium like the MT750 out of their high-end mouse range would make a killer combination with this particular keyboard. Even if it did cost a few extra dollars, I still would have liked to have seen it done. The lack of a caps lock light was also to a bit of a pain, but otherwise it was a really decent experience. The wireless keyboard manufacturers out there have definitely stepped up their game and Rapu has made a really nice keyboard. But let me know what you think down in that comment section. Do you like chiclet style keyboards or are you a bit more of a membrane or mechanical style user? But let me know down in that comment sections. Otherwise guys, if you want to pick up one of these keyboards, I'll left them linked down below. Also, too, if you want to check out the MT750, I've left it linked sort of up there. And also, too, down in that description box. Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.